Hey guys, Steve Harris here, excited today to show you Omni, our latest theme. Now Omni is a fairly big theme, we've got lots of pages and layouts here, and as you can see on the home page, we've got this nice video background, and if I scroll down, you can see we've used a variety of effects where we've kind of got this layered multi-column approach, I'll show you how this was achieved. Below that we've got some grid style galleries, some tasteful entrance animations, so just a great looking site layout here. We've also included an alternative homepage, one that has a carousel instead of a video background. We've got some gallery layouts where we have photo grids and mixed grids, so really great looking pages here. An about page where you can put some information about your business and your services. We've got a really interesting blog integrated. We've got a couple options here. Uh, we have the blog list default, and if I go to that landing page, you'll see that we've used kind of the standard blogging widgets available in Architect. So this is the all posts widget and the recent post widget. And if you click on them, of course, they go to the individual blog post pages. We've also included a couple of alternative blog layouts where you could manually style and create a blog landing page. So in this case, these are not automatically pulled in from the blog. We've manually set up an image and a description. And what we're doing is just linking these directly to the specific blog posts. So this is a really nice layout here that you could use for displaying your blogs. And there's also a grid layout where we've done this kind of interesting photo and then blank box effect. And I'll show you how that was done when we tour through. Next up, we have an elements page where we're just looking at some of the textiles used throughout the site and the headlines for when you replace them in the global settings, you'll see your headlines updated here. And then a couple of contact page options with maps and that sort of thing. So overall, great looking theme, great use of gradients here, and just really stylish and good looking. So let's go ahead and load this up as a template and I'll show you how to edit some of these elements. Okay, so here's Omni loaded up in my site editor and let's just have a look at some of the more unique features of this theme. The video background used on the home page is the background of the row. So if I click on the row indicator and edit the design, you'll see beneath the background section, we have color, image, and video. In this case, of course, we're using a video, and we have this note that says for tablet and mobile, select an image. That's because tablet and mobile devices, for the most part, are restricted from showing background videos to protect data bandwidth. So in those cases, you'll need to set a static image, but if you want to update this video here with YouTube or Vimeo, you can do that in this option. We also have a background overlay applied to this, so it's a little bit of a dark overlay at 36% opacity, and if you wanted to darken that up a bit, you could bring up the opacity just like that. Okay, let's close that box, and I'm just going to look at the alternative home page, which is the carousel page. So to access these sublevel pages, you just need to click the little drop-down arrow beside the page in the Pages panel, and you can click on the page to edit it. So on the home page with the carousel, what we've done here is we've integrated an image slider. So if you just click on the image slider, it will load up the images. You can drop in your images here, and then of course change the design settings within the design panel. One other item I want to show you, throughout the site we've used these gradient dividers. So an example is right here. The way we've achieved this is we've just created a very slim row, and it has a small spacer element within that row. And if we edit the design there, you can see that the background image is a gradient color. So gradients are new in the architect editor, and we've just got this gradient applied. That's how we've done these dividers. Let's also have a look at this layout where we have these two columns and then the image sitting on top. Now, elements like this are somewhat challenging to do when you have limited layering control. And the way that we've achieved this effect is we've actually applied a background to this row. So you can see we have a row here, and if I click on it and edit the design, we have a background image applied, and you can see that image has two columns basically built into it. So half white and half kind of this gray color, and that's just a PNG image, very low file size because there's nothing to it, it's just color. So that's giving you that effect of having this two column layout. Then what we've done on top is we've got our column structure here with one column on this side and one column on the right side. And you can see I could actually drag the column divider around here to change that column spacing. So that's how we've achieved this effect, and it's a really interesting approach to creating a layered looking site. Let's jump into the About page here. I'm going to go to Pages and About. One thing I want to point out on the About page is we've used this listing of different people within the company. Now this is actually a pre-built section within the editor, and I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of how to create a new section because it's a really quick way to add content to your site. Below an element on your site, you get this blue Add Section button, and if we click on that, 
it brings up a bunch of pre-created section options for you to select from. So as you can see on the left, we've got a whole bunch of different categories for those sections. And if you just go to the team section, this is the team section that we've used in that area. So just remember to use sections as often as you can because it's a great time saver when you're building your site. Next up, let's close that. I'm not gonna add that section in there for now. Let's go to our pages panel and I'm gonna open up the blog page. So let's just go to the blog list default for now. So on the blog list default page, we've obviously got the all posts widget here pulling in some content. If you click on that widget, it brings up some options for styling and how you want that content to be prepared. If we click the manage posts option, this is going to bring you into the kind of core of the blog where you can add new posts, modify those posts and that sort of thing. If I look at the manually created blog pages, so I'll go to blog list expanded, you'll see that that is not the all post widget. This is just a manually created layout where we've got text boxes and headlines and that sort of thing. So in this case, what you'd need to do is link this read more button to a post on the site. So once you've generated a blog post, you'll have a URL for that post. You would just copy and paste that URL in here and you're good to go. There's a really interesting effect done on the blog grid page. Let me show you how that's done. So if I scroll down to this area where we've got these boxes with white and an image, the way that we've achieved this, and if you click on any image, it'll pull up the widget options. We've used a photo gallery widget for this, and we've actually just used blank white images. So we're kind of alternating between an image and in the blank white image. On the blank white images, of course, we've applied a caption to that with a description and in a button over top. So this is a way that you can kind of show this unique gallery style. And what we've done again is manually link these to all of our blog posts. The last thing I'll show you here is on the pages panel. Let's go to the elements page. Now this is very likely a page you're going to delete out of your site or hide out of your site before you publish it. But what we've done here is we've just listed the headline styles. So if we want to change the headlines throughout our site, we can go to design, global text, and then we can go ahead and change the headlines in here. So the H1, for example, we could change this to something like this Acme font, and we're done. And you can see that the H1 style automatically updates on this page. If you decide that you want to modify this text slightly from the default global style, just be aware that once you edit it, it overrides the default style and kind of breaks the link between that style. So you would have to manually edit this headline in the future if you updated that global style. So that's a quick look at the Omni theme layout. As you can see, it's a really great looking theme, but in terms of construction, it's fairly standard. We're just using columns and rows with some unique overlay effects and gradients and that sort of thing. I think this one will really wow your customers and clients. So thanks again for checking out Omni and we look forward to seeing what you can build with it. Cheers.